better run, man. Life's a pain, but you got me. Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you. Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to wrap up and conclude our thoughts on Venom Lethal Protector Volume 2 slash Volume 4, whatever it is. But this is issue 5, and this is by David Michelini, who's writing on it, um, doing the writing duties. And then Fareed Karami, who's doing the amazing artwork. And I got to be honest, the story wasn't anything, you know, super special, considering it's from, you know, half of the creators of Venom. I expected a lot more. The first Lethal Protector book that uh, Michelini did last year, whenever it was, was a big letdown to me. This one, though, started off on a better foot, but I feel like it didn't really stick to landing from a story point. But luckily, Fareed's artwork has been consistently good through the whole thing. I really love Fareed's art. And I'm going to show a couple pages off here. We are going to get into some spoilers because I got to talk about the ending of this book and what I think about it. And that's why I waited a little while before, you know, hopefully you know, posting this video because I wanted this to go up a little while after so I could talk full spoilers, but still encourage you to go buy it yourself. You know, I don't want to spoil stuff the day they come out, but I do after a while, you know, when I feel like it's good enough, you know, a couple weeks have passed, try to discuss it then and get into some details. So we will get into some spoilers of issue five. So if you, you know, don't want any spoilers, wait for the trade. It's coming out soon or go to your local comic store and find this issue. I'm sure it's still available by the time this video is going up. Uh, originally, but probably not if you're watching years later, uh, maybe a back issue bin somewhere. But, you know, the artwork is fantastic. And honestly, that's what carried me through this entire story because the story was just okay. And considering the first Lethal Protector, I felt was very bloated and unfocused. This one told a story that I that was easy to follow. Not that the last one was confusing. I just kept wondering, why are we doing this? Why, why are all these characters coming in? Why, you know, it just felt like overloaded for no reason. And this doesn't. This felt like, okay, here's a story we want to tell that involves Eddie Brock, Dr. Doom, uh, Dr. Goddard, Pablo, you know, bringing Pablo back. So, uh, and then Silver Sable, obviously, in her wild pack. I thought all the elements were there to tell a decent story. And I thought in the end, they did tell a decent story, but I just didn't feel like the landing was stuck. And that's just because what it comes down to with stories like this with Venom is how we all feel about the character and his relationship with the symbiote, right? So if we see that relationship not done in a way that we personally like, sometimes that takes us out of the story a bit. And that's what this one did to me. It feels like that, uh, you know, Michelini's kind of take on the symbiote is he, he doesn't really give it a personality. It does communicate with Eddie, but we don't see that communication fully. Like we see Eddie's side of it sometimes, but not fully. So because of that, it's hard to really sink into their relationship in this story. And I felt like there were some beats in this where you needed communication between them to help sell some of the plot points of this. Uh, but in this issue, there is, I, I kind of feel like I'm going to play devil's advocate here because, you know, the symbiote doesn't have a lot of personality. It doesn't talk to Eddie. It doesn't talk to Doom once it bonds to Doom, or at least we don't see it talking to Doom. So because of that, it does give an air of mystery to it. And maybe that's what Michelini was going for was, hey, we don't really know at this point in the timeline the full intentions of the symbiote, what it can do. You know, we just know what was originally established. And that's kind of when this is set, right? Is like during that those early days of the symbiote uh, before, you know, Eddie became the lethal protector before he went to San Francisco. So I can understand that if I'm going to play devil's advocate. Like, all right, you, you, you cut out the communication stuff. So that way when the symbiote bonds to, you know, Dr. Doom here and we see him fighting with Eddie, grabbing all these swords and Eddie grabbing a sword too to fight back, um, you know, you don't know what side the symbiote is ultimately going to go on. The downside, though, is that we do know what side <laughs> the suit will go with because, you know, we're in the future and this is set in the past. And that's, a, you know, one of the frustrating things, I'm sure, as a writer doing these, like when Peter David was doing the symbiote Spider-Man stuff, he was probably, all right, I got to be really careful about, you know, what kind of cliffhangers I have because obviously people are going to know long term what's going to happen. And I think, you know, where Dave, you know, Peter David did a really good job on those, Michelini struggles here. It's I feel like he still writes like people don't know what happens after this at times, you know, and, uh, and I don't know. So that kind of takes me out of the story a bit. But that's also just my opinion. And it's just coming from like what I see on the page uh, from the dialogue and stuff. Uh, but the art, luckily, every time I read something dialogue wise, it pulls me out and I'm kind of like, Ugh, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling this the art pulls me right back in. <laughs> it's like the symbiote trying to bond with me. Fareed, you're trying, you know, you're, you're pulling me back in, dude. And I love that. So I, you know, hopefully whatever project you work on next, I hope your rate goes up or something because, you know, you earned your, your pay on this and hopefully uh, a little bit more because, um, you know, I think you carried this book. And that's saying a lot because Michelini is a phenomenal writer. He's written a lot of great stuff that I love, 
but his just current Venom stuff hasn't fully hooked me. And although this is a big step up from Lethal Protector, the previous one, three or two or one or whatever he calls it, um, it is a big step up. It still has moments where I'm like, oh, I don't know. I can't, I can't fully get into this story. And, you know, you have these big action scenes with Sable showing up. So basically, the to, you know, kind of recap a little bit, you know, Doom has the symbiote. He's like, all right, I'm going to use this. I'm going to go, you know, go into hell or whatever I'm going to do. I'm going to go attack some people first. And his kind of his motivations go all over the place. And they do address that. So, you know, to give Michelini credit, he does address that uh, of why Doom is not acting like the Doom that was around during this time period, who wasn't a good guy by any means, but had like a code. And he's breaking the code big time in this book, but it's because he bonded with the symbiote and it's kind of toying with his emotions every time he thinks about his mother or he thinks about something else it's pulling out out that emotion and bringing out kind of you know a less focused side of doom um one that doesn't have those rules or follow those rules so okay i i can you know buy that for a little bit you know for for the sake of this story i'm like okay i don't love it but i guess it's something uh but you know so you have eddie who's captured Dr. Goddard breaks him out, and then Eddie, you know, frees Pablo. He, you know, gets Dr. Goddard out of there. Silver Sable and her team show up. They track, you know, Eddie, and or actually they track Dr. Goddard back to this facility, and they're coming to save Goddard. Eddie, I think at one point says, oh, great, they're coming to save me, and Goddard's like, I think they're here to save me. <laughs> I don't think they know you're here, and it turns out they didn't know Eddie was there. So, uh, so I, I thought that was a fun moment. Um, but then Eddie battles Doom, and, uh, and he's trying to fight Doom, which is such a lost cause because he's getting his butt kicked throughout the entire battle. I'm surprised he's not dead in the first two pages because you have Dr. Doom with a symbiote. But I think the symbiote's holding back a little bit, trying not to kill Eddie, and Eddie starts to sense that. So when they crash the jet, when Doom is trying to escape, Eddie confronts Doom and is like, hey man, I want that suit back. You know, And he's like telling the suit, like, come back to me. You know, whatever happened, you know, like whatever he's promising you, whatever it is, you know, just remember me. Remember why we bond so well together, our hatred and what we want to accomplish. And eventually that's enough for the symbiote. He finally gets through and the symbiote rejoins Eddie and turns him back into Venom, who then gets into a, a really big battle with Dr. Doom. And I was surprised actually by the outcome of this battle because, you know, remember at this point in the comics, Venom hasn't really lost any major fights uh, at this point. I mean, I guess maybe Maximum Carnage, he got weakened during that. Um, but I don't think the Clone Saga stuff had happened yet, or maybe it had just happened. Um, and maybe, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't, we, it's still hard to determine when in the timeline this kind of takes place. Um, but uh, what we do know, though, is that Eddie is, you know, not holding back, and neither is a symbiote, because it doesn't like it, or it didn't like, I guess, being bonded to Doom, and it likes being back on Eddie. I'm assuming because there's no real, you know, peek into its mental state. You're just, just going by actions um, and the visual storytelling you can see that they bonded together again and they're taking Doom down. And they actually defeat Doom. I, I wasn't expecting that. You know, Doom is, uh, he's not an easy guy to defeat, <laughs> for sure. Um, but at this point in the comics, neither was Venom. But I still feel like what they did here, it kind of works. Because you find out that Doom is disoriented, kind of, too. After being separated from the suit, Clarity's starting to set in. Well, oh my goodness, what have I been doing? You know, what he's remembering his actions through the lens of the symbiote being bonded to him. And he's like, wait, that's not my MO. That's not what Doom's about. So to be fair, you know, he does lose, but he is not on his game either. I think if he really wanted to kill Venom in this moment, I feel like Doom could have. But because of that reason, at least that's what I'm imprinting on the book based on just kind of visual uh, storytelling. I'm going to say that Doom kind of let him win a little. And then they make a deal. And he says, look, I'm never going to mess with you again. Doom is like just, you know, the symbiote... Venom puts a, a chunk of it inside the suit. It goes into Doom's armor and finds its way into his nostrils and mouth and is clogging up his breathing. And Doom is like, fine, I'll, I'll do whatever. You know, I'll, I'll stay away from you. I won't try to take your symbiote again. Um, you know, whatever. It's, it, it's, it's a poison anyway. It got in my mind. It affected my emotions. And I don't want to be a part of it anymore. So please just spare me and I'll let you go and I'll never bother you again. Which, okay, now that you put that in the continuity, then how do you explain Carnage Bomb or Venom Bomb, uh, you know, <laughs> when Bendis did that? Like, I was hoping this would kind of tie some of that together a little bit. Um, but then again, there you go, having unrealistic expectations uh, for for writers, you know, knowing multiple continuities. Um, but even then, it's like, I don't know. It, I don't blame Michelini either, because he's probably like, whatever, Venom Bomb was just like a throwaway story for like two issues anyway in Bendis' Avengers run. So... Anyway, Venom does win. He beats Doom, or, or he makes a deal with Doom, and then lets Doom leave. And so Doom takes off, 
And then that's when Dr. Goddard is rescued by Silver Sable and her team. Pablo is rescued and, uh, you know, and Eddie kind of gets a, a handshake and a pat on the back from Silver Sable. But we don't see Fury again. So, you know, that whole story just ended in the last issue or two, uh, which that feels like Michelini, you know, whenever he writes his miniseries, it's like, all right, this character's gone now. And you're like, oh, OK, <laughs> there's not going to not there's not a full, you know, arc with this. But I guess he kind of gave a good goodbye to Eddie and, and Nick Fury. And I think it was the last issue or the one before where Nick Fury just goes, you know, is, are you going to say thank you to Eddie? And, and Nick Fury is like, whatever. And he like walks away. So, OK, that's I, for me, that's good enough, I guess. But I, I still would have liked to seen something with Fury in this. But at the same time, that's just fanboy stuff. He's not really needed. And, and Michelini does do a good job, at least in the last few pages, just focusing on how to wrap this up. Uh, even though I don't feel like the landing was stuck, that's mainly because the stuff with Doom I didn't really fully like. But in the end, I'm like, it's fine. You know, like this this series, I do feel like even though the landing didn't get stuck as well as I would have liked it to, uh, it still was okay. And it's certainly a lot better than the, the landing the last of the Protector story did. So I got to give Michelini some credit for at least being focused in this. Um, and, and telling a through story, something that was easy to follow from beginning to end without a bloated feeling to it. And I also got to commend Fareed Karami for just carrying, for me, this book with his amazing artwork. And I can't wait to see where Fareed goes next. You know, so Fareed, if you end up watching this video, you know, um, you know I, I love your art. And, uh, and I don't have really any criticisms of it as an editor and as someone who just loves reading comics. Like, just going through this, I'm like, man, everything's clean you, you can follow the action. It's done really well. He he lets things breathe, you know, through a couple panels. And I don't know if that's the script breaks these panels down like this or if Fareed did. And then the words were added in later, like old school Marvel style scripting. I have no idea. But I do know that at least visually, the story was like, okay, whenever I felt like the text wasn't there, I felt the story, gave, the visuals gave me enough to kind of keep following stuff. And that's good partnership. You know, him and Michelini, I think overall did a good job. But I think Fareed was the stronger of the two on this book. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, I still think Michelini is a fantastic writer. and I, But I, I don't know if I want him to do any more of these. Although this one was better than the last. So if he does one more, maybe it could get you know even better. You know, who knows? But if you do another one, Michelini, bring Fareed back if he's available. Uh, because, uh, yeah, artwork's amazing. So overall, Lethal Protector 2 slash 4, whatever this is, I'd probably give it like, I don't know, the first the first Lethal Protector Michelini did that he came back with, um, I feel like that was had pretty good art too, but it was maybe like a two and a half or two out of five. This I feel like is a three and a half to four out of five. Like it's it's good, you know, it's good. And uh, and that's a step up. And so, uh, so yeah, for me, I dig it. That's my opinion of it. But if you have a different opinion or same opinion, whatever it is, let me know down below. I'd love to keep talking to you about Lethal Protector. We can talk about all the spoilers from all the issues. And I'm sorry I didn't have a digital code for this. Um, you know, this one didn't, it's one of those where I had to like email somebody and I was waiting for a code back and I didn't get one back. So boom, there's a digital code to another book. Uh, you know, I'll put it up on the screen. I think it's a Carnage book. So if you want that, first person to put that code in for making it to the end of this episode gets that comic book, but only works once. So hurry, type it in, get there, go to that website, put that code in and let me know your review of that book down in the comments below. Or you can find the video that we reviewed if you want to put the comment there, that's fine too. Uh, but anyway, Venom Lethal Protector, do you think they should get another series? You know, do you think there should be at least one more from Michelini and make this kind of a trilogy type thing and bring us all the way up to, you know, the moment Peter and Venom shake hands and then Venom goes off to San Francisco? Would you like to see that? Or are you fine with just these two? Um, I could go either way. If they announce another one, I won't be upset about it and I'll probably read it. Um, but uh, if they don't, announce another one I also won't be upset uh, but I just hope Fareed continues his career at Marvel or in comics goes out there finds another project and whatever you're working on Fareed I'd love to know it because I want to read it when it comes out for sure so thank you so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and I have more Venom vlog for you very soon <laughs> blah 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 right I'll have more Venom vlog for you very soon thanks so much see you in the future peace